Cine primes are usually much more expensive than photo lenses, but at the end of the day both can be used for filmmaking. In this video we are taking a closer look which advantages and disadvantages cine lenses offer and if they are worth an investment. Additionally I will review the Schneiderkreuznach cine prime set by the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. In order to better understand how both types of lenses work, let's take a look at their overall differences. T-stop versus F-stop. How much light passes through the lens is differently measured. On city lenses it is measured in T-stops and on photo lenses it is measured in F-stop. But what's the difference here? The F-stop is only measuring how much the iris is open, but the problem here is that it is not measuring how much light exactly passes through the lens. Let's see here, here we have a physically longer zoom lens at f2.8 and a physically shorter prime lens at 2.8. And as you can see the f2.8 on the shorter prime is much brighter and that's because the light has to travel less through a short lens which results in light loss when it reaches the sensor. On the longer lens it has travel more which results in more light loss. A T-stop on the other hand measures the exact amount of light which passes through the lens. This way it is ensured that each lens with the same T-stop has the same brightness no matter what focal length or manufacturer we are using. So a T-stop is much more precise and saves time on set when switching lenses so you don't need to set the lights differently since the new lens is apparently darker than the previous one. The next point is continuity. Cine primes are often sold as a whole set consisting of different focal lengths, whereas photo lenses aren't really available as a set. If I buy an entire set of a manufacturer, so as we did with the Schneider primes, you have a couple of advantages. All lenses within the set are exactly matching considering color rendition, sharpness and T-stop. Furthermore, all focus and iris gear are at the same position and they all have the same weight and filter diameter. Also this will save time on set when changing lenses since focus motors and everything else doesn't need to be repositioned on your rig. On my photo primes I have some Sigma primes and the problem is each lens is differently in size, weight and front diameter and none of them match perfectly considering color and brightness. So at this point you clearly feel the compromise with photo lenses. The next point is focus and iris. As I already mentioned on cine lenses the focus and iris have gears for focus and iris motors or follow focus systems. This means cine lenses are completely manual so no autofocus, no image stabilization and no electronical aperture adjustment on camera. On cine lenses the aperture is also declicked and can be adjusted smoothly without any jumps as you see. On photo lenses you see the adjustment so you see jumps of brightness in the image when adjusting the aperture. Also focusing is much more precise on cine lenses since the focus borrow is usually around 2 to 300 degrees whereas on photo lenses this is mostly only 90 degrees. For this reason manual focusing is difficult on photo lenses since between 1 meter and infinity there's only a minimal of focus rotation left. On the other hand, with cine lenses you need a follow focus or a focus puller since adjusting the focus by hand can be challenging. The next point is the mount. Many cine lenses offer a mount swapping set so you can swap the mount yourself with a few screw to get for example from EF to PL and your warranty is not voided. On photo lenses you have to buy a new one to correct with the correct mount installed. Sure there are possibility with third party adapters on mount solution but at the end of the day it's always easier when it comes from the manufacturer itself. Then we talk about breathing. If you never heard about breathing, breathing is the effect which appears when focusing from close to infinity and the image starts to zoom even though it's only a focus rack. On photo lenses this is always an issue because these lenses are made for still images and not for continuous recording. To be fair on most cine lenses they also suffer from breathing but it's very minimal to almost non-existing. 
And now let's take a closer look onto the Schneider Kreuznach Xenon Primes. We decided on buying the Schneider Kreuznach Xenon Primes for a couple reasons. The build quality is exceptional and all of them have a T2.1, which is pretty good also in low light. Image wise, you get a clean look with nice consistent color rendition, a neutral bokeh and nice sharpness and nice flares. As every lens, also these lenses have their weaknesses, which is definitely chromatic aberration. From 2.1 to 2.8, you can see a chromatic aberration drastically sometimes. Sure, it can be removed in post, but I would have wished for less chromatic aberrations. But to be fair, at T4, they are usually gone. So for a German manufacturer prime sets, uh, this is personally, I think, a super investment. So all in all, cine lenses, so as cinema cameras, are truly made for one purpose, and that's filmmaking. They have absolutely their advantages when it comes to that, but also they acquire with different workflows, sometimes also more people. Filming with photo lenses is possible, but at the end of the day, it always feels a little bit like a compromise. Nonetheless, as a solo shooter and for run and gun style, I personally also would pick a photo lens since autofocus and optical image stabilization are really nice to have. If you are working with an assistant or even a team, then cine lenses should be your choice. So I hope this video was really helpful to you. Subscribe to my channel so don't this you don't miss any of the upcoming content. Man, my English is horrible today. <laughs> and see you in the next one. Cheers.